We have in the past covered countless ancient anomalies found amongst the many ruins of ancient Peru. Hillside fortresses, mountaintop sanctuaries, completely self-sustaining, technologically advanced group whose ruins still contain countless as yet unexplained methods of construction and often incorporating inexplicably large megalithic blocks once quarried, carved, transported, and then somehow, seemingly effortlessly, placed atop one another. Masters of architecture, irrigation, stonework, and horticulture, this group, although claimed to have been that of our far less capable recent ancestors, the Incas, built self-sustaining, earthquake-proof settlements high among the clouds. Sites often built at altitudes far higher than 2,000 meters above sea level. With these ancient, once indigenous builders, also one installing simple yet incredibly effective gaps in the pathways to such sites as Machu Picchu, allowing the inhabitants to draw the bridges to the site, cutting it off from any possible invaders. Once these bridges were removed, sites such as Machu Picchu became virtually impenetrable. We have previously covered many incredible Peruvian ruins. The Intihuatan, for example, is yet another relic we recently covered here on the channel. It is yet another example of this now lost civilization's past knowledge and extraordinary now lost capabilities. A solar clock, precisely bored into being, directly out of the bedrock of Earth, which precisely indicates the solstices. We discussed how certain characteristics of many ancient sites, most notably the apparent Mayans masonry, Incan, and Neolithic sites, such as the Stonehenge within the UK, all display a past obsession with solar precisions. Furthermore, the constructors of these sites all displayed an uncanny urge in particular and undoubtedly most prominently at the site of Machu Picchu to undergo a mammoth undertaking, to create what now appears to have merely been a quirk of engineering, entwined within the architectural planning of Machu Picchu itself. It is often perceived as overkill, so much polygonal masonry is present virtually everywhere it could be laid. Perhaps these efforts of stoning up literally every crevasse at the site, regardless of whether it would be on public display or not, may have merely been due to a purely aesthetic obsession by a once highly capable, now lost civilization. One who must have perceived such, as yet unexplained tasks, as child's play. The incorporation of natural geological features into the sites is yet another curious characteristic of Machu Picchu, which many individuals who visit the location are perplexed by. It would appear that the ancient civilization responsible for this incredible site's existence, like a number of the other sites we have covered previously, incorporated the living rock of the mountains into the construction plans of their past sanctuaries. Rather than have simply carved them flat, Many ruins display a collaboration of such natural stones into the buildings themselves. The Temple of the Condor is one of these incredible examples. A natural rock formation, which was formed millions of years ago, was spared destruction and was incorporated into the building of the site, subsequently becoming a place of worship. Many believe the temple was a pilgrimage of religious worship. The masons who manipulated the Temple of the Condor into the site skillfully shape the rocks below the main menhir into the shape of outspread wings of a bird largely believed to be that of a depiction of a condor in flight. According to a number of studies of the ruin, upon the floor of the temple is the carving of the condor's head and neck feathers flowing up into the body, which is the natural formation we still see today. This completes the posited figure of the three-dimensional bird. The Temple of the Condor is undoubtedly one of the most spectacular examples of what these so-called pre-Incas were once capable of. Like so many other ancient sites found all over the world, share so many characteristics with ancient Peru, the question is why did the builders of all these sites go to such great efforts not to displace or even incorporate seemingly common rocks into the build of the sanctuaries? Who were the builders of Machu Picchu? Were they a world-faring civilization? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling.